What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be talking about and breaking down the top couple of stocks, ETFs, and ETNs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here heading into the month of November in 2019. I also want to break down with you all the S&P 500, ticker symbol SPX, so we can get a better understanding of what the overall markets have been doing in terms of the 500 top US companies, and I also want to break down with you guys the futures market very quickly so we can get a good idea and understanding of where we could potentially be going for this upcoming week. And by the way, for those of you guys that do not know, the futures market opens up 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. So we can see, you know, the S&P 500 futures, the Dow Jones futures, you know, the NASDAQ, crude oil, gold, silver, all of that good stuff. So again, we can plan our trades for the beginning of the week, which is Monday, right? So if you enjoy this video. If you find value in this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me. And don't forget to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community. And those are linked down below in the description box. And oh my god, I almost forgot guys, we're also going to be talking about natural gas very quickly in this video because it gapped up, meaning you guys can be a good play for this up coming week. So let's get into it, starting off with the SPX, again, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. So not to spend too much time on this, but this past week, you know, a lot of big companies have been reporting earnings. We're in the middle of earnings season. Last week, we had Amazon. We had Microsoft, two of the biggest ones, right? This week, we have Apple. We have Facebook. We have AT&T. So we're kind of in the heart of earnings right now. And on this five-day, five-minute, you can see the S&P has been been doing quite well. It's been ascending in price. We almost hit that all-time high. We missed it by about 60 cents. Pretty, pretty crazy, right? We got to about 30.27, and if we zoom back to the four-hour chart, you guys can see we literally missed it by about 59 to 60 cents, which is absolutely crazy, right? But if we go back to that five-day, five-minute, again, we're ascending in price, higher highs, higher lows, all of that good stuff, and I expect that to continue this week if we get good earnings from Apple. I think Apple is going to weigh this market a lot this week because if Apple goes down, a lot of companies kind of correlate to Apple. Let's be honest. A lot of people view Apple as one of the, the, the best companies out there. And honestly, it is one of the best companies out there. And it is one of the biggest companies out there in terms of market cap. So I think really this week, it's going to be moving depending on, you know, what are these earnings doing? You know, if Apple tanks, guys, let's say Apple goes down to 220, 210, let's say they have an abysmal earnings, I think that could end up dragging down the market. And of course, a lot of these other big name stocks, if they do bad as well, you know, that could drag down the market. But let's say Apple explodes, let's say it goes to 250, even 260, you know, like, like Microsoft did, Microsoft popped up, you know, if Apple follows similar, you know, a similar pattern to that, you know, this market could be going to all-time highs in no time, right? So that's the S&P on the five-day, five-minute. Overall, you know, on the four-hour chart, we're, we're a bit bullish right now because we broke out of the ascending triangle. We filled the gap up to that all-time high. But now, again, what I'm waiting for is to see, you know, are we going to continue this run-up? Are these earnings going to be good this week? And if they are good, again, I expect that pop and I expect that all-time high here in the S&P 500. So taking a look quickly, now at the futures, the ES. Uh, e mini s p futures the ticker symbol is slash e s we can see they're currently up four dollars four points nothing too crazy right up about 0.13 percent but the thing is they're up so they're green right now so i want to see you know is this going to carry over into the pre-market session tomorrow if it does let's say we wake up the markets are maybe up eight nine ten points in terms of the futures you know a lot of these large caps are up that could indicate a green day for Monday, a, you know, a green start to the week. And there's a lot of trades that I would place if we were looking to push green in the morning, right? A lot of those trades would be, you know, in ETFs and ETNs like these right here in my market ETFs um, watch list. You know, TQQQ is a perfect one to play if these markets go green because this one follows the NASDAQ, right? It's a 3x leverage.
leveraged ETF. So the NASDAQ goes up 2%, let's say, for example, you know, TQQQ is going to be up 6%, right? So those are ones that I'm going to be watching. SPXL is one that goes up when the S&P is going up. This is a 3x leveraged ETF as well. So those are some plays, you know, if these markets push up tomorrow that I'm going to be watching, right? The NQ right now, the NASDAQ futures up 21 points, up a quarter of a percent right now, 0.26 to be exact. They actually gapped up and hit that all-time high just now, about a couple of minutes ago, or really in the past hour and 20 minutes since the futures market has been opened, which is amazing, right? So we gapped up 80.62 now is the all-time high for these futures. So just keep an eye on that, guys. And again, a lot of these tech stocks, which are, you know, weighing the NASDAQ here in the pre-market session tomorrow. If we look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average here, guys, up 0.15%, up 40 points. And you guys can see this is not doing as well as, um, you know, the S&P and the NASDAQ. And that's because some of these Dow companies like 3M, for example, 3M uh, completely, uh, uh, you know, did awful on earnings, right? Their stock went down heavily. That dragged down the or the, uh, the Dow Jones, right? Boeing has been doing very poorly. That's been dragging down the, uh, the Dow Jones as well. So that is why you're seeing this at a lower level than maybe the S&P and the NASDAQ. But nonetheless, it's great. Green again, and I'll be watching this tomorrow to see, are we going to break 27K and maybe start to fill the gap up to 27.3, which would be the next channel here on these Dow Jones futures. So that's kind of the breakdown on the S&P, right? And these, and these market futures here, you know, they're all green. So watch the large caps tomorrow. Watch these futures heading into the pre-market session tomorrow as well to kind of see what is going on. And let's say these, these futures turn red. We'll, we'll flip over to, you know, these bear ETFs like TVIX, you know, uh, SQQQ, these ones that do well when the markets in general are selling off. So now that I talked about that, now that we got that out of the way, let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on the markets right now? Do we hit all time highs this week? Are we going lower this week? Let me know. And what do you think about Apple's earnings? I would love to know what you guys have to think about that. So let's talk about natural gas very quickly quickly because you guys did see that in the title of today's video and we got quite a nice gap up here of about eight points up 3.39 percent here on natural gas which is incredible right if we break down these technicals very quickly you know this is looking like it's uptrending now, right? We found the double bottom here at about 220, which is, you know, a bullish reversal pattern here, just like a double top is bearish. A double bottom is bullish, right? We got the double bottom. It wasn't perfect, right? This was at 222. This was at about 219, 220. You know, I guess you can argue that's a higher low, not really a double bottom, but still, this is looking pretty bullish to me, right? We got the low 220. I guess you can say, yeah, that is a higher low. And now we're pushing up and we actually gapped up up all the way up to 238 now, which I think it is a higher high, right? We popped uh, we popped above this 237 level of resistance. So at this point, this is looking bullish to me. We're still trending below the 180 SMA, which I would need to see a break above that. And honestly, a break above 240 before this is in full on bullish, mo in, in, uh, you know, a full on bullish mode. But you know, we're on our way there, right? Once we break this level, I think 240 is going to be the next spot we test. If we break 240, guys, and we hold that as a new support, watch for the fill up to $2.48, which is a big margin, honestly. It's about a three to, to, to about a 3.5% gap fill, you know, from 240 to 250. That's what you're going to need to watch here if we do pop into 240 tomorrow, which is pretty uh, likely at this point based on the price action here. This is extremely bullish, right? We've seen natural gas gap up, you know, I feel like so much over the past, um, not really over the past couple of weeks, but we've seen it in, in certain time periods gap up day after day, I feel like. That's kind of what I'm, uh, you know, I'm trying to say here. And you can see here, you know, it's done exactly that during this stretch here from August, the beginning of August to about the middle of September. We were literally gapping up every single day. So the fact that we gapped up once today, that is looking very bullish to me. If we gap up again, maybe tomorrow, you know, into two. 40, that's going to be even more bullish. And again, watch for the fill up to 250. And what I'm watching in particular, guys, is you guys, right? You guys, you know, this one's been finding a bottom, it seems like. 
If we go to the 20 day, one hour, strong, very, very strong level of support here at about $12 and 53 cents. You know, we, we found about one, two, three levels of support there over the past week. You know, if we go back to the, you know, the beginning towards the middle of October, we found a support level there as well at about 1250. So with this natural gas gap up guys, I do expect you guys to open up something like this tomorrow. Maybe not that extreme because that is in the 15s. Yeah. I don't think it's going to open up in the 15s, but it closed at 1309. I think there's potential here um, since natural gas is up. What at this point? Let's take a look at it. It's up 3%. You know, there's potential here that you guys can open up anywhere from, you know, 7% in the green to about 9% here based on what natural gas is looking like, um, you know, in the pre market session. So overall, natural gas is looking bullish, guys. Watch for the pop here on you guys. Very bullish move on. On you guys, you know, if we do break above this 180 SMA, which again I think will happen here in tomorrow morning since natural gas is gapping up aggressively, right? So just watch that. This can very well be a nice um, morning play here, you know, right when the market opens, depending on what NG is doing. But overall, again, very bullish natural gas. You guys, I'm watching those heading into tomorrow. Those are probably uh, my, my uh, top plays here heading into tomorrow. So in terms of stocks here, guys, we have to talk about about a couple that are reporting earnings this week. One of them is Facebook stock, guys. Facebook stock, this one, in my opinion is tuning up for a breakout if they do well on earnings. That's a big if here, right? We've had a mixed bag earnings so far. Um, a lot of the tech stocks have been doing quite well, actually. You know, if we're looking at Visa, they beat. Um, PayPal, they did well. Microsoft, they did do well as well. I didn't dive into their earnings too deep, but I know they did well. Um, Amazon, not so well. They beat on, uh, I believe they beat on um, revenue, but they missed on EPS. So it's kind of been a mixed bag. But with Facebook here, I'm interested to see what they do, right? I'm interested to see if they beat on EPS, if they beat on revenue. I think if this stock breaks 190, guys, it has breakout potential because take a look at this. We've kind of been trading in, in, in you know, this horizontal channel over the past couple of weeks between 176 to about 190. We've really been there for about a month, two months at this point, two, three months almost, where we've been kind of seesawing just like this, right? So I think... Once this breaks 190, 192, guys, this can be a gap fill up to at least 205, which you guys can see. You can see that's a resistance based on this trend line from about a couple of months ago, right? 205 could be a level, and even higher than that would be around 210, which if you guys remember, last earnings report, they went crazy after market hours. I know you guys remember that. I sure do. They went from about 198. You guys can see this is when they reported earnings. They peaked at 215 bucks. Am I saying that Facebook's going to do this exact move again? Probably not. I'm not saying that for sure, but I'm saying if they beat, if they do well in earnings like they did, you know, I, I, you know, at this point in time here, actually, did they, I forget honestly what they did in terms of earnings, but the stock did well. Um, did they miss on, according to this, they missed a little bit on EPS, but I think their revenue did well. Nonetheless, the stock went up like crazy, right? So this one from 192 up to 205, if we look at how much money we can make in terms of a percentage here, and remember guys, percentage is the name of the game. It doesn't matter what you're trading with. You need to focus on in terms of a dollar value, right? You need to focus on the percent because percent is the name of the game. If you have 500 bucks and you make 5%, sure, it's not a lot of money in terms of dollar value, but once you scale your account and you keep those strategies, you know, and uh, your discipline airtight and you scale your account and you make that same 5%, you know, that's going to be more, more, more and more and more in terms of a dollar amount as you get your money up. Think about it. 1000 bucks. Let's say you start out 5%, 50 bucks, 50 bucks is, is a respectable profit and 5% is an amazing profit, right? But once you get up to 10 K, you make 5%, 500 bucks, right? A lot of people out there, 500 bucks is a really good profit. And for me, that's an amazing profit too, right? 500 bucks. Who wouldn't want that, right? So focus on profits in terms of percentage. Don't get discouraged if you're trading with 200, 500 bucks. 
but just focus on the on the percentage, right? That, that's just the name of the game at this point. I see a lot of people focusing on dollar amount. It's about percentage, guys. So 6% up to 205, above that to 215-ish would be around 10%. So Facebook worth watching on a potential breakout here after earnings, right? AT&T is another one. They're reporting earnings on the 28th, which is actually tomorrow. They're at a dip right here, 36.75 roughly is where we're at right now. High at about 38 50 ish that gives us about a four to five percent margin of profit here on AT&T and let me see are they reporting before the market yes they are before market central standard time so depending on what they do tomorrow guys in terms of their earnings this could be a nice morning play just like you gas and natural gas because I expect this one to be a bit volatile right all like just like all the stocks are most stocks are um, you know when they report earnings so AT&T four or five percent here um overall i'm liking the trend here obviously you know we're killing it on at and i'm killing it on at and you know in pretty much all my accounts here i own it in my private account i own it in the public m1 account if you guys want to go check that out i'm up like i don't know like 12 15 percent or something like that on the position and um yeah I, I just love the company it's on an uptrend here um nice little dip for my swing trading account i might consider this after earnings um yeah i think it's worth watching here heading into tomorrow another one that i'm watching here oh god guys i almost forgot um what it was oh of course how could i forget guys it's tesla right good old tesla tsla look at this move here guys from 254 all the way up to 330 in the matter of a couple of days that is absolute insanity so if we're looking at this one year one day chart some levels i'm watching on tesla here are going to be 320 since we broke above that resistance now it's a new support so maybe if we cool off a bit here um on tesla which could very well happen because it's been getting you know this is just insane it's like a rocket ship here over the past couple of days so if we cool off you know rsi comes down a bit 320 we might find support here in the short term right and from there what are we going to do right are we going to hold that are we going to break that maybe go back down to 290 which I don't know if that'll happen here, guys, to be completely honest with you all, because that is a big chunk move to the downside, and Tesla is running on good earnings here and some optimism, so I couldn't really see them fall 40 points at this point, but who knows, right? That could maybe happen. But I would see if they find support at 320 or somewhere in the $300 level here in the upcoming week, and uh, we'll just, uh, you know, really just you know, figure out a way to trade it once it finds support, right? But I've been finding, you know, I've been getting a lot of questions recently about Tesla. And honestly, if you're not already in it, I wouldn't touch it, right? If you're looking to swing trade it here, um, that's a bit out of, uh, uh, kind of crazy in my opinion, to be completely honest with you guys, because this is like FOMO, fear of missing out. You know, you're at a peak right here. I don't know if it's the peak, but you're at a point where the stock is so high, you're seeing the hype, you're like, okay, maybe I should buy in right now and it'll continue to go up. That's not a good mindset to have, and you know, in my personal opinion, you know, I would personally wait, like I said, for a pull down to potentially get back in. Um, you know, in terms of Tesla, don't rush it, guys. There's a bunch of other, uh, you know, stocks, ETFs out there that I think are better, but still, it's worth watching here. Ticker symbol um, TSLA. And let me grab my phone very quickly, guys. I dropped it here on the floor because I did have, you know, uh, some notes here about some stocks, other stocks that I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, let me see. Oh, oh my God. Now, now I'm remembering what they were. PayPal. That's the one I want to talk about because this is one, guys, that is breaking out right now. Facebook is about to break out, in my opinion, but PayPal is breaking out right now. And why is it breaking out? Well, because we're breaking above these moving average resistance levels, which over the past couple of months really since you know the end of july these levels have been acting as a resistance so you know we've been making lower lows we've been making lower highs now we found a bottom it seems like at about 96 bucks positive earnings here like i mentioned a couple of minutes ago we're breaking out of those moving average resistance levels we pulled down if you guys can see on the five day five minute you know we pulled down a bit found a support on top of that resistance level as a new support on the four hour chart now we're popping up as you can see by the candlesticks and we're doing a move that really 
is really simplified and shown here by this um, arrow as well. So PayPal, watch this one, guys. I'm heavily considering a swing this week, um, you know, in PayPal. And actually, wait. No, never mind. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. PayPal swing right here. Um, you know, up to about 122. That's about a 12% move there on PayPal. And V is the one I'm actually still holding, right? V, I'm still holding. This is one that I held into their earnings, right? You know, I, I bought in initially at about 174, 70, sold half of my position into earnings, held the other half after earnings, and they actually reported good numbers as well. So resistance I'm seeing on V right now, 180. 80 bucks. Next one's about 182. Next one's about 184. So at this point, I'm looking for it to break 180. And of course, after that, again, 182. These are some levels where I'm looking to sell off my shares. And to be completely honest with you guys, you know, if we gap up tomorrow to 180, I'm liquidating my position on V and probably going to look for a better entry point after that, just to lock in the profits and just to play it safe. Another one is CMG here, guys, Chipotle Mexican grill good old chipotle mexican grill this one you guys can see <coughs> oh my god excuse me guys you guys can see on the one year one day chart chipotle mexican grill is holding on that uptrend very very nicely if we go back to that four hour chart you can see it's not fully it hasn't really fully found a bottom quite yet because on on uh friday we had a pretty poor day in terms of uh you know cmg not a very bad day, but we really just continue the downtrend from the previous day, so that's not looking too good in my opinion, but once we do something like this and break back into I'd say at least 800 bucks, you know, that's going to be a reversal pattern to the upside in my opinion, you know, back to that 4 hour chart, at that point we should be finding support on this trend line and we should slowly be making our run back up to, you know, 810, 820, and I think this offers a lot of swing potential, you know, probably in the 800s, right? Because again, that bottom should be solidified and that would be a safer time to get in. So overall, guys, those are some that I'm watching. You know, gold right now is up 70 cents. You know, we're breaking above moving averages. I'm probably going to be watching this. Maybe it fills up to 1540. Who knows, guys? You know, crude oil at this point, not moving much right up four cents. We broke above 56.20. That's a good bullish move here. Maybe we fill up the 60 bucks here over the next couple of weeks over the next couple of months. That's kind of what I'm watching here based on these technicals. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts about this you know, video? What are your thoughts on the stocks, ETFs? What are your thoughts on the markets? I'd love to know. And if you enjoyed the video, all I ask you to do guys is to go down below and hit that like button. I really appreciate that. It really helps me out and helps the channel out in general. And it lets me know that you guys are enjoying the content. So feel free to go down below hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me. And again, drop a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the market. And don't and don't forget to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group to be further connected with me and the entire community. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out. What is going on, everybody? It's